Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. We're going to do a timeless and collective reading. So whenever this reading finds its way to you is the right time. But remember it's a general reading so see which signs and symbols resonate for you to help bring you some kind of clarity to whatever you're wondering, concerned, confused about. It could broaden your perspective and show you something in a totally different light or it could narrow your focus and show you something you could be missing. But in the end, trust yourself. Trust yourself. Trust your own inner divine guidance inside of you to bring you clarity. And in the end, try to make balanced decisions between your logic and your intuition so that you make sound decisions that are based in love. Love. Love for the highest and greatest good of everybody. So all of us, so everybody is uplifted in love. See how it feels for you. Let's begin. I have the divine dog oracle. We're going to start with this one. I haven't used this deck since Rose was a little, little puppy. So let's start with some divine dog guidance. It's like companion energy. Um, let's see what God, source, Holy Spirit, Christ consciousness, our higher selves, angels, and energies of love have for the highest and the greatest good of all. Clarity for the collective, energy to focus on. <laughs> we keep getting this passionate energy, guys. All right, so there's, there's definitely passion in the air with something. Either this is a project this is a new relationship. This is something going on. Like it's coming through like every reading. So there's some passion here, but it says to do what you love. So what do you really love? What makes you feel young and, you know, like energetic? What, um, you know, fuels your fire, fills up your battery, you know, this could be a particular person that you have just passion for. Or if it's a project, it's something that, you know, you really want to wake up every day and do it. You get excited about this. Here it has this dog, like, <laughs> fetching the stick. Like, hours and hours and hours you can do this thing and it doesn't matter it's like you can fetch that stick every single time and it is just as fun as the last time so let's get some clarity on passion oh i just feel like it's an overall passion but if it's something specific it's also like trickling trickling its way into other categories of your life you know, I, I, I'm getting even others can just recognize there's something different lately with you. There's something new, a Bruin. So let's get some clarity on passion. Clarity for the collective. Cooperation. Oh, it's, it's so cute. It's the same stick. It's the same stick that you were catching on your own, but now you have somebody else catching that same stick. Growing up, I had a brother and sister German Shepherd. And whenever you would throw it, this is what they did. They brought it back together. So you're doing something with somebody else that has the same passion you do. So it's cooperation, working together. You're both building something together building a relationship, building a project. Um, it's so cool. It's literally like the same thing. So maybe somebody has the same passion as you or you're discovering new passions together. You know, sometimes having different passions is really actually, oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So even if your passions are different than somebody else, 
you're so passionate about it that it's like inspiring this person or they're also passionate about something that's inspiring you. It could be to do something together, but it could just be talking out your own, talking about your own individual passions. Uh, let's get more, let's get another card, one more card. From the Divine Dog on Passion, Do What You Love, Cooperation, Better Together, um, and Balance, Steady As She Goes. So there is a balanced energy here. Even if it's like totally different things that you're into, it still brings a balance into your world. Look at this dog on a skateboard. So maybe you're doing something a little unconventional. You're... You know, like, like, yeah, I see you doing something unusual. I'm getting unusual energy. Maybe it's special for you. Maybe that's what's, um, I hear a nat, like enigma. So like enigma, maybe, maybe you're an enigma to somebody else or, um, I'm, I'm getting like depth, depth, something different, doing something I'm just getting really unusual energy. So maybe you have a really unusual skill or job or something to talk about. Just like unusual subject matter. Um, steady as she goes. So little by little, something is coming through. Something is coming into balance. What's at the bottom of the deck? These are beautiful cards. Contentment. So this dog is just in the heat, but chilling in the the tub outside be satisfied so there's satisfaction balance cooperation passion and contentment um this feels like gratitude like just really feeling grateful for this new energy that's coming through this new relationship this um, balance that suddenly is restored to cooperate together. Even if you choose to just, you know, go after your own stick, there's still a cooperation together here. So looking around you and seeing what's beautiful, looking at your blessings. We're going to go to the tarot. I have the, the wizard's tarot. This is a little unusual. It has like like different visuals in it. So let's get some clarity for the collective. Actually, let's do this. Let's pull one tarot card to clarify each of the oracle cards. Let's see how this layering effect goes. Let's pull one for passion. Clarity for the collective on passion. Doing what you love. A passionate experience. A moment. I feel like it's a lot of moments, though. It's moments that grow and continue. Clarity for Collective. And the world keeps coming in, too. So, yeah. So this is like, you're on your way. You're taking a bow. There's a bright ending and a bright beginning. There's You're walking through this, I wanted to say like a channel. So maybe some of you have YouTube channels. Um, like it looks like a portal. There's this big wreath around the whole thing. And I don't know, it kind of looks like a bird. Let me see. I'm gonna put my studious glasses on, guys. What's here? Yeah, it's like a purple bird. Oh, it's a fairy, and then there's a fairy there, and a salaman salamander, and a gnome. So you have elemental energy around you. Um, working with the elements, um, you, you're holding these two staves or these two batons and there's just the sparkly like sky. It's like you're stepping into a new dimension here. It's like you're leaving this world and the world was fine, but this new world, there's like a new world, like brand new possibilities that are coming through and that's on your passion. All right, so let's Let's go to cooperation, working together, maybe having the same passion or just 
sharing your passions with somebody else. Clarity on cooperation. You have the Six of Cups coming back. So this is working with maybe a younger energy or tapping into your childhood, maybe somebody from your past, past lives. This is revising a situation that maybe ended in the past. Um, something's coming back around, but this is also sometimes the Six of Cups is nostalgia. So it's taking you back to being a child or something that you remember. You could be remembering it in a more or less fond light. So maybe something wasn't working in the past, but you're remembering all of the things that did work. Um, here, it's like this woman is giving this younger child a cup like giving them the opportunity to have their own experience. You're sharing something emotional. You took something off of the shelf. It just makes me think of like childhood toys. Something that you have that's on the shelf. Maybe there's something that you have from childhood that inspires you about something. Um, it like takes you back. Sometimes smell does that. So maybe there's a, sp a smell. Maybe it could be a cologne or a perfume or a flower, a food, something like that. And it like takes you right back into a memory. Memory can be triggered by both music and smell. It's very powerful. It triggers the same little part in your brain to take you right back to a memory, like everything, what you were wearing, how you felt. Um, I just see a person now in a car with like, like, get, like in the summertime and getting the, the wind, like and music's playing on the radio. So maybe something's going to come on the radio that reminds you of something you did as a kid. But if this is somebody coming back from the past, you know, maybe an old friend or, or lover or a family member calling you up, deciding to cooperate and do something together, let's get a clarity card on balance. Steady as she goes. I heard Steady Freddy. Maybe somebody knows somebody named Fred or Freddy. It makes me think of the Flintstones. Um, maybe something in the Flintstones that is from the past. I just see where she's taking the like tr the brontosaurus ribs <laughs> out to the car and then the car like falls over. Um, so maybe there's like a big feast, you know, something feels like abundant and satisfying maybe even like a little too much at first so you're bringing that back into balance uh let's see balance steady as she goes clarity on something coming back from the past connecting with your childhood or children Ooh, this is death we're getting repeat cards almost every reading this is a beautiful death card i i actually thought it was the lovers when i saw it first It's like there are two different energies becoming one. She looks human, he looks angelic, but there's some kind of passion or some kind of experience with this dance where it's almost like his wings are setting on fire so that he can maybe not have wings and they can be human together. I mean, that's, I'm getting like a little, like the little mermaid Thing with this um, so maybe somebody was really different than you but somehow even if there's differences there's this union this is the Phoenix rising energy it is releasing something completely um, I just had that example of the hair you know so sometimes something is not like it was sometimes you have long luscious hair and then you chop it off it's gone it's gone <laughs> You're going to start with something new, something fresh, something different. It's not going to be like it was, at least not yet. It could grow, but it's releasing, totally releasing something. It's not going to be like it was, and you're somewhere different. So it's learning to enjoy these new differences, to enjoy how you're changing, how I hear how you're rising. I mean, I... <laughs> I heard rising to the occasion. So that could be an occasion, getting up and doing something, maybe in front of an audience, in front of, uh, it could be family members. Um, but that also took me to like 
Well, gosh, guys, we're rising to the occasion. So, I mean, maybe there's new passion that's coming through. Let's see what that's at, what's at the bottom. No, there's no bottom. So we're not supposed to see anything else. Hmm. One card must be backwards. So let's clarify with another deck. Let's clarify the world, the Six of Cups, and death. Contentment, passion, cooperation, and balance. Clarity on the world first, please. Thank you. Number 21. Oh, well, I saw the lovers, <laughs> so here we go. The lovers is coming through. So it's about a choice, working together with someone. <sighs> Even the angel looks happy that these two are together. I'm not sure if on YouTube I have to cover the butt cracks, but I will do that. <laughs> here we go. But it does look like these people are different. You know, they're different somehow. I mean, here they're purple and pink. So um, differences from your different from different places, maybe different ages, different ethnicity, different values, or different like beliefs. But somehow together they're perfect. I mean, this angel is up here. Look at the angel. The angel looks like oh, like been waiting for this couple to get together already or this union to happen um i like that it's a blue angel with red wings so the lovers is major arcana number six it's like gemini i'm getting gemini and i'm i just feel like this union is blessed working together it's a choice so it's making a choice um, or maybe both people are choosing to work together. There's only two people here. So working in harmony, working in cooperation together. Um, it's over the world. So it's after this big ending and getting yourself back out into the world that this finds its way to you. So maybe some of you are traveling Maybe you meet somewhere, somewhere in a far off and distant land, maybe in just another neighborhood, or maybe you're connecting to somebody online. Um, let's get clarity on the Six of Cups. I just feel like the angels are singing in this card. Like there's such happiness amongst the universe. <laughs> All right, let's see on the Six of Cups what's coming through. Clarity on the Six of Cups, that one. And that's the Queen of Pentacles. All right, so maybe it has to do with the Queen. The Queen of Pentacles is usually an earthy sign. She's like Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, doesn't have to be. But she is able to create magic out of, I, I hear like junk. Like she's the queen that can go in the garage or go to a garage sale and see all these things that people see as like, not valuable and make it valuable like create some gorgeous chandelier that she sells for thousands of dollars uh it's it's a nurturing energy but it's a it's an earthy energy it's grounded she's grounded she's self-sufficient she's practical she's real she's real she wants to talk about real stuff real problems real solutions and doesn't want to, you know, get, she's not wishy-washy. She just speaks the truth. Um, I just get creative, even though sometimes I think the creative energy is more the queen of wands, but I feel like she's creative, but practical. Um, I just see like uh, preparing meals for the rest of the week. So looking through, like I see somebody looking through like a recipe book and putting stuff together so she's well prepared for future experiences. She's also pretty fertile because there's a little bunny here. So it's being fertile. And when I think of a bunny at the bottom, when I think of the rabbit, I think of how they run and they don't run straight. 
the, the rabbit runs like this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. So maybe there's multitasking going on with this queen, able to handle a lot of different things at once. The children, the job, the household duties, having some fun, the lovey-dovey stuff, the family, like everything at once on the phone, but doing stuff on the computer at the same time. So I'm getting also that you can jump from situation to situation as needed and handle it in the in like in a moment i feel like she's um uh like like street wise like street smart queen of pentacles let's get clarity on the, let's get quick clarity on death first and then we'll see what we need to clarify with the layering energies. Clarity on death for the collective. And the moon. So, I mean, here there's two women. I'll color, uh, there's only one butt crack showing of that. But there's two women, also different, working together, but they both have on a mask. So there's something that they're not saying. There's something that's not seen. And there's something kind of scary here in the water. So maybe they're scared of some kind of emotion and not addressing it. Um, the moon comes through when you have to learn to see in the dark. Really, really pay attention to your like inner sense of knowing when the moon comes through to get your way through a situation. Um, Sometimes it's holding something back or pushing something away, pushing something under the water that feels scary. But sometimes when it comes to light, it doesn't seem so scary. So it just makes me think of walking through the woods and like, <gasps> like you see a shadow, like, oh, like it looks so scary. But then you see that same thing in, in the daylight and it's, it's like, I don't know, a weird branch or something that's not scary at all. If it just comes to light, if it's just addressed, that's major arcana number 18. Um, but that brings you to a nine, which is completion. Let's get, um, I feel like we should bridge another card with these. So let's bridge the queen of pentacles with the moon first. And then we have the 10 of cups. So this is beautiful. This is contentment. This is the happily ever after card. This is having everything that you want. I feel like there is a non-traditional family here and it's beautiful. I feel like there's almost like adoption with the children. Um, so maybe you have this deep desire or this secret that you never wanted to like let out on what you want for your ultimate ten of cups maybe it's not traditional maybe it's special to you but maybe you're going to find this other person that has the same values that has the same wishes has the same dreams this is like the best possible emotional experience you can get let's get clarity between the lovers and the queen of pentacles I mean, in this card, it's like a same-sex relationship. So that could be you. Maybe somebody you know. Maybe that's not traditional for the family. But you're going to find your, like, your person, your people. I feel like there's a lot of love here. There's also a dichotomy between... There's like a city one way, and there's the country the other way. So it's like there's a little house on a hill here. And then there's the city. So maybe some of you are leaving the city, going to the country or vice versa, or having a vacation home or going somewhere different, like somehow combining maybe, you know, one individual likes the city, one likes the country. You find a way to make it work. Let's get clarity between the lovers and the queen of pentacles. If this is not, you know, somebody you know, this is the energy coming through as the advice, male or female, to help you right now in this situation. It's being practical, being realistic, 
talking about things that are helpful in your everyday world so that you can bring abundance into your world, seeing what you can work with. Um, I mean, she can be elaborate in her like aesthetic you know, loving beautiful things around her, but it doesn't have to be expensive to look expensive or to have value. So I'm getting like redoing old furniture. Maybe you have, I'm getting like the difference between something you order, I don't know, Amazon or Ikea or something like that. And like you put something together, but in a couple of years, if you had a lot of heavy books on it or a lot of clothes in that closet, it tends to like wobble or, you know, tip sideways and not be so strong anymore. So maybe you're finding a way to almost use, cause she's over this six of six of cups. So it makes me think of going back to antiques. So maybe you find something at an antique store, like, I don't know, from the thirties, from the forties, from the fifties. And it was made so well that even now it's still gonna last. And maybe you have to like revamp it a little, shabby chic it, you know, make something, you're, you're taking something that has a solid, you know, it's solid, it has value. Maybe other people didn't rec recognize how valuable that shelf is or that piece of furniture is. That's what I'm getting with this. And you're discovering it, you're like, hmm, I'd give you like 40 bucks for that. And you get it and then it's creating this beautiful environment. I'm getting like a beautiful home. So maybe it, it is a new home or doing something new in your home, but there's something practical about this. Um, or maybe you find old furniture and paint it, um, reupholster it and then sell it. And somebody else can't do that. So your skill is valuable to that person. And because you're working with something that's like really solid, like a good structure, it's going to like, like bolt, like increase in value. Now I see like stocks going up. So maybe some of you have investments, something in the stock, something that you've invested in and it bolts up. Um, yeah, cause it's with the six of cups. So it's maybe something that you thought about in the past or already invested in the past. And maybe that's like popping through now for you. Let's get clarity on the lovers and the queen. The five of cups. So the five of cups is mourning. It's sad. So maybe this was a relationship that didn't work before, or you're moving out of this situation. Maybe you were in a, like a healing mode. This is feeling really sad about something that you lost and you're, or you were or are working through having that focus on it but that's how we that's how we um like channel healing sometimes we need to focus on what didn't work because that's how we we get through it but you have two cups here that are full and ready to go so eventually you need to refocus from the loss to what you gain or what you still have. Um, let's see, because this is over the lovers. So maybe you're looking at like past situations that didn't work, but then you have this beautiful, passionate energy coming through. Um, let's see, let's get clarity on the Five of Cups specifically. You do have progression because you're moving from the Five to the Six of Cups here. Clarity on the Five of Cups. Death again. It keeps on coming through. So it's time to transform that energy. It's time to turn that frown upside down. Um, that's, that's what I just heard. Um, so it's letting, letting, some, letting something go. If you're holding on to your ex's crap in the closet, it's time to let it go. It's time to have some fresh energy. If you're holding on to, you know, something that didn't work or how you were hurt in the past, it is okay to move through that and allow those feelings to come through as they do. But this means you're getting out of that energy. You're starting to see a brand new light. You're starting to feel like you're rising up again. Like this is possible. You know, you're coming out of the dark 
things that felt really scary before maybe are starting to feel not so scary anymore. Maybe somebody from the past is going to help you see this, but I'll show you these two cards together. So maybe you and somebody else are the Phoenix rising. You're both coming from wackadoo, didn't work out, like situations. And instead of focusing on what didn't work, you're both coming into this brand new energy and that's why you find one another. Because now you're both ready to recognize it when it was there. Sometimes if we're going through something, we can have love staring us in the face, but we're not in the position to accept it or see it so if you're both coming out of this situation with the five of cups because it was over the lovers it was over both of you then you're both having this transformative energy now that is going to totally change what you're doing because you're heading to the five the ten of cups you're heading to the ultimate happy place i'll show you what's at the bottom of the deck it is the knight of pentacles so we do have two pentacles energies two earthy energies now he's not quite enough he's not quite a king he or she here it actually looks like a girl it could be either but this is the night that gets the job done at the end so maybe somebody is a little less experienced than you it doesn't mean they won't become the king but they have to go on that journey and learn something along the way to really finish like I'm getting to the, the the finish line so if it's the hare and the tortoise the tortoise is the one that's gonna win he's slow so sometimes when I see the knight of pentacles it's like he moves so slow that you kind of don't think there's any progress but there is sometimes it's happening behind closed doors and it's just a day by day process this night plans he goes outside he gets on the horse he takes breaks he or she and goes through all the necessary steps for something to really reach its goal for something to reach its manifestation for something to really be solid he's or she's that solid offer in reality land in tangible world on things that you can do, being practical with your surroundings and what you put your energy and time and value into so you can have this happiness. Let's, what do I have? Let's see how we can bring this together. I have a, I have a, I have a deck that my friend gave me. It's a beautiful deck. And I used to do an Oracle card at the end of my readings and then read from the book. And this, deck in particular will require me to do that because um, it's a very simple message and I don't know that much about this many roses. Um, and then we'll see if what it says helps bring this reading together. One more card to clarify this reading. I keep wanting to look at this moon card, but I feel like these people are being their authentic selves now. Maybe they felt like they had to wear a mask before, but you know, they're showing their true nature here. And even if there's this scary thing in the water, I feel like working together and I don't know, like working maybe through emotions together or being truthful about how they feel, being truthful about what they went through um, is going to, I don't know, I don't know what this creature is here in the water. Let's see. I feel like it's, it looks scary. I feel like it's that walk in the woods. I'll show you, let me cut the me cover her butt crack Boop. you know it's like it does look scary it looks like there's something that's like really scary but then 
I feel like it's almost like how a shadow looks. How it's not necessarily, it could be a beautiful mermaid, but because of the moonlight and the way that the shadow is kind of warping everything, it's actually not that scary. Let's get clarity from the Oracle of the Roses. For the collective. The Seeker. It's called the number 44, the Modern Gar Garden Rose, Mrs. Robert Perry Rose. <laughs> that's, very, that's a very specific name. It's a beautiful white rose. So maybe the name Robert or Perry or Rose. I have a rose. Um, let's see. Let's see what number 44. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the architect, the wild rose. Woods Rose. The Wild Rose makes me think of something really natural, something that's you know, like not necessarily cultivated. It's something you find out in the woods. It's something you find out in nature. It's something that you discovered out of nowhere. Um, when I see this, it makes me think of rose hips, which makes me think of the jelly this is really random, but there's like a jelly that's popular in Croatia and it's rose hip jelly. So maybe something about jelly or rose hips. Um, let's see. Number 44 is the seeker. So let's read this. Let's look at the end. Is it the last one? It's the last one. So you have the last one in this deck and then you have the world. So... used to the glasses thing yet. I will. I will get used to it eventually. 44 of the seeker. When we seek, we often, we often look to improve an aspect of our lives and what we learn along the way can be dropped as we make our way to the finish line. That's like the night getting to the, I said the finish line, right? Examine closely your own small successes and enlightened moments. Now is a good time to start a new project, direction, relationship, or cause. The seeker is constantly picking up clues and pieces of knowledge to see how they fit into the world. And they view life as a great adventure. They sometimes don't even have a goal, but are the seekers of the thrill of whatever discovery is made along the way. It's like, you know, it goes back to that passion. If you just have that going on, like every day is adventure, is an adventure, is a, like a, I'm getting like a, like a treasure hunt. Like what could happen? It's okay to have goals and have set goals, but like sometimes the detours and like, you know, you can have a journey and have a destination, some place you're going, but sometimes that car ride or that plane ride or that way there is the best part. That's the part you remember. So then it has a lot of stuff about the flower, which I won't read, but it says improvement, identity, freedom, motivation, discovery. It's associated with Taurus, and the deities are Adonia, Consanu, I think I said that wrong, and Neptune. But since we're only reading the first part, let's read number five. Five is change. When I see the number five, I think of a wheel. Something's a changing, something's spinning, something's moving. So the architect is wild problems and even seemingly impossible challenges may be arising. This may be an opportunity to create something new or just take a different path to your goal. Be careful not to simply jump onto a new direction just because you desire the outcome because the foundation will not be sound. Are you ready to dedicate yourself? So when I saw that like jumping timeline thing in another reading or like jumping from a different branch, maybe it's jumping on that branch, but then like paying attention to the road, to the goals that you make along the way, not having a preconceived idea of what that road would be like because you haven't been on it yet. Are you ready to dedicate yourself to making a development that's required? The architect reminds us that it, that to be the maker of our own destiny, but to plan carefully and deeply before we set forward on our construction. That's definitely that Knight of Pentacles. So 
It's also like a little bit of the magician. So, all right. So maybe you're just learning to be satisfied along the way, along this journey. Maybe there's somebody coming along for the ride or somebody you're discovering on that new branch. So don't be afraid to change your plans and to make plans and adjustments as you go, as you move, as you change into this new dimension, this new, like, feels like a new life. So I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. I love you so much. You're so special. You're so important. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.